Keep me, O Lord, as the apple of thine eye. Protect me under the shadow of thy wings. Words taken from the gradual this morning. And from the offertory we will hear. The angel of the Lord shall encamp around about them that fear him and shall deliver them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We've been in Jerusalem under the good King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah these last four days. Surrounded by the Syrians, wielding the sword of fear, boasting and bragging and trying to increase the fear in our hearts, trying to terrorize us. We are reflecting then on how to conquer the fear that wants to rise up in our hearts. One of the ways we have discovered to do this, to conquer this fear, is to realize that the situation is really inescapable. We just need to deal with it and fight back. Or to die a happy death, a glorious death that will save souls. So it's better to keep our position and fight rather than run away and be enslaved later. Better to stay the course and die a glorious death for God and his church than it is to flee. Now, another way to conquer this fear is to engage our memory. Remember, one of the internal causes of fear is a lack of memory. Recall that little children easily become fearful because they lack sufficient memories to know what is and what is not possible. And so we say their imagination often gets the better of them. They imagine the boogeyman in the closet or under the bed. As faithful Catholics, we have access to the memory of the church herself, which is a treasure beyond reckoning. For example, when the Maccabees were confronted with many enemies surrounding them, we read in that very important book of the Bible for us today, that important book, they paused. They reflected on times past and they discovered something wonderful, namely that God loves to work great reversals. Thus they recalled the splitting of the Red Sea in the night and the drowning of Pharaoh's powerful army in a single night. How Gideon's tiny force of 300 men was able to decimate the Madianites in the middle of the night. How God had them turn their swords on each other. So using this memory, we start again with David. The source of fear during his time when he was a youth was Goliath and his huge sword that was turned against the Israelites. But that very sword was turned on him such that he died by this sword and his head was chopped off by his own sword, and his army fled in terror. This same sword was then employed by David to defeat the Philistines time and time again. This is a repeated theme in God's plan in salvation history. Judith, we know the story of Judith, she entered the camp of Holofernes, who was instilling terror among all the people of Judea. When all were cowering in fear, Judith went into their camp and she cut off the head of Holofernes with his own sword. Amazing. And what happened to his army? They fell back into disarray and fled in terror. And I think many of them even slayed each other in their confusion. Like David, Judas Maccabeus struck down the superior forces led by Apollinus. And he took the sword of Apollonius and fought with it all his lifetime, the Bible says. The very sword he was threatening the Maccabeans with was used against him and his army. He was victorious with this sword, that is Judas Maccabeus, again and again and again. What about the story of Esther, the scaffold that Ammon erected for Mordecai in the times of King Artaxerxes and Queen Esther? was then used to hang him. The very scaffold he had planned to hang Mordecai 
was his scaffold. The men who falsely accused Daniel and insisted that the king throw him to the lions were themselves cast into the lions and devoured by them when Daniel remained unhurt. Thus David says in the Psalms, They prepared a snare for my feet, and they bowed down my soul. They dug a pit before my face, and they are fallen into it. My soul is bowed down. Why is his soul bowed down? In fear. He was afraid in the face of such great powers, and yet they fell into the pit they dug for him. And the prophet Isaiah, our Lord says, I will feed thine enemies with their own flesh, and they shall be made drunk with their own blood, as with new wine, and all flesh shall know that I am the Lord that saved thee. In another place, he says in the Psalms, For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. And thou shalt seek his place, and shall not find it. In the Maccabees, we also read these powerful words. Judas Maccabeus. He says, For the success of war is not in the multitude of the army, but the strength that cometh from heaven. They come against us with an insolent multitude and with pride to destroy us and our wives and our children and to take our spoils. But we will fight for our lives and our laws. And the Lord himself will overthrow them before our face. But as for you, fear them not. Judas Maccabeus. Although the fear rising up in us may have a number of causes, let us be assured that the sword of fear being pointed at us can and will be turned on the enemy when the Lord so wills it to be. The world, no matter how united, no matter how organized it, it be against us, can be decimated and turned back in a single night. This is true, as our memories tell us it is so. The very sword being used against us will turn and be used to destroy them. We are now afraid, but the devils will run in all their hordes in total and utter terror when God so wills. Now finally, what happened to those Syrians that are surrounding us? When you keep reading the book, it says this. This is from Four Kings, but you can find it in Isaiah chapter 36 and 37. It came to pass on a certain night that an angel of the Lord came and slew in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and eighty-five thousand in one night. And when King Hezekiah arose early in the morning, he saw all the bodies of the dead and they were all no more. Yes, fear may be rising in our hearts at this time. Let us quell this fear by overcoming sin and lack of virtue in our lives, practicing penance, penance, penance. Let us search the memory of the church and see that God loves to work great reversals for those who remain faithful to him. So what did St. Bernadette say that she feared? She feared only one thing, bad Catholics. That's who we should fear. Bad Catholics. Well, in any case, we will calm the waters of our hearts by doing penance and being virtuous and being faithful. We will calm the waters of our hearts by looking back at the memories of the church. We will calm the waters of our hearts and minds and thereby keep the devil and the communists he uses at bay even turning their own weapons back upon their own heads. And they will find nothing and no place to fish among us. Keep me, O Lord, as the apple of thine eye. Protect me under the shadow of thy wings. And again, from the offertory, the angel of the Lord shall encamp around them that fear him and shall deliver them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.